electromagnetic induction. Earlier we have seen how a current carrying coil or a current carrying conductor produces a magnetic field. Whenever a current passes through a conductor, a magnetic field is produced around the conductor. In the first picture, we can see a switch open. That means there is no current flowing through that circuit and the magnetic needle remains in the north-south direction indicating there is no magnetic field. No current, no magnetic field. In the next figure, we see that the switch is closed and now current begins to flow through the conductor. And as current flows through the conductor, the magnetic needle deflects from its north-south direction because a magnetic field is produced around the conductor due to the current. And this brings about the deflection of the magnetic needle. In the next picture here, we see again current being produced in the conductor but now the current is in the opposite direction. If you not notice we have interchanged the terminals. The positive and negative of the battery has been interchanged and the current is flowing in the opposite direction. Notice the deflection of the magnetic needle. The magnetic needle now deflects in the opposite direction because the current being reversed, the direction of the magnetic field has also reversed, resulting in the deflection in the opposite direction. So we have seen that a current carrying conductor produces a magnetic field. Let us now ask a question. Will a magnetic field produce current? We have learnt current produces a magnetic field. What about the reverse? Will a magnetic field produce current? And yes, a magnetic field does produce current. This phenomena of the production of, mag of a current due to a magnetic field is called electromagnetic induction. Electro means electricity. It's mag mag magnetic means in the, uh, magnetism or magnetic field. Induction is to produce. So electromagnetic induction is production of electricity due to a changing magnetic field. The key word here is not just magnetic field, it is a changing magnetic field that produces electric current. So remember this word, changing magnetic field produces electric current. Let us now learn how a magnetic field produces a electric current. Before we set up this experiment, let us learn the function of each of these devices. Here we have the galvanometer. This is not a cell. It is a galvanometer, just detects current. When there is no current, it remains in zero position. And when there is current, it deflects either to the right or to the left. So if the galvanometer has deflected, it's a sure indication that there is current flowing in that circuit. So a galvanometer is a device used to detect current. Now the galvanometer here shows zero deflection. That means there is no current flowing through this coil. This is an ordinary copper coil. Here we have a magnet with its north pole and its south pole and its magnetic field lines. The magnetic field lines are present in the area around or the region around the magnet called the magnetic field. So in the first case the coil and the magnet are stationary 
and when the coil and magnet are stationary, the galvanometer shows no deflection. So our first observation is when the magnet and the coil are stationary, the galvanometer shows no deflection. The minute the magnet moves towards the coil, the galvanometer shows a deflection. So our next observation is when the magnet is, moves towards the coil, the galvanometer shows deflection. Now we'll move the magnet away from the coil. And again, the galvanometer shows deflection, but now in the opposite direction. So when the magnet moves away from the coil, the galvanometer shows deflection, however, in the opposite direction. It is to be noted that the galvanometer shows deflection only when the magnet is in motion. The minute the magnet is stationary, the galvanometer comes back to its net zero position. In the first observation, we said that when the magnet and coil are stationary, the galvanometer shows no deflection because the magnetic field associated with the coil is stationary. It is not increasing nor is it decreasing. The magnetic field is constant and the galvanometer will not show any deflection. So we can say when there is a constant magnetic field, there is no deflection. There is no deflection means there is no current induced. But however, when the magnet is now moving towards the coil, the magnetic field associated with this coil keeps increasing. The coil is in a region of increasing magnetic field and hence current gets induced. The same happens when it is moving away. The coil is now in a region of magnetic field and hence current is induced in the coil. So here we can add another point. Here we said when the magnet moves towards the coil, the galvanometer shows deflection. It's because the coil is in a region of increasing magnetic field. The magnetic field around the coil is increasing. It's changing. Hence current is induced. And when the coil is moving away from uh, the magnet is moving away from the coil, there is again deflection because now the region around the coil is experiencing a less, a lower magnetic field. Since the magnet is moving away, the magnetic field in the region is decreasing. So here when it's move, moving away, the magnetic field is decreasing and hence current is induced. So what, what do we learn in this experiment? The minute a coil, any coil, is in, in a vicinity of changing magnetic field, not just magnetic field, either it could be an increasing magnetic field or it could be a decreasing magnetic field. It is a, in a changing magnetic field, immediately current will be induced in that coil. Your current is induced. Let us make some observations on this self-induction uh, experiment. Now if the coil is kept stationary and the north pole is moved away, you'll find the deflection in one particular direction in the galvanometer. And if you move the south pole towards, the deflection will be in the same direction. So the north pole moving away and the south pole moving towards will have deflection in the same direction. The effect is the same of the north pole moving away or the south pole moving towards. 
Now again, if the coil is kept stationary and the north pole is moved towards you will find the deflection in one particular direction because current is induced. The same effect is shown when the south pole is moved away. So the north pole moving towards and south pole moving away has the same effect on the galvanometer shows direction the deflection in the same direction. So in this first case if the current is In, uh, in this direction, in the clockwise, in this case the current will be in the opposite direction. However, if there is no relative motion between the magnet and coil, which means if the magnet and coil are moved together or if the magnet and coil both are stationary you'll find there is no deflection in the galvanometer and current is not produced. And the reason for this is the coil is in a constant magnetic field. Constant magnetic field does not produce current. So if the coil and the magnet are stationary or if the coil and the magnet are moving together we find there is no current produced. The same effect is seen if the magnet is kept stationary and the coil is moved. We will now explain the phenomena of electromagnetic induction using two coils. Earlier we explained the phenomena of electromagnetic induction using a one coil and a magnet. As we moved the magnet towards the coil, a current was induced. And as we moved the magnet away from the coil, the current was induced again, but in the opposite direction. So every time the, uh, there was a relative motion between the coil and the magnet, current was induced. Now we are going to show the phenomena of electromagnetic induction. But in this case, we are not going to use a magnet. We are going to use two coils. Before we get on to this experiment, there are certain things we need to remind ourselves. Is that whenever current flows through a conductor, a magnetic field is produced. In the earlier experiment, we had a coil and then we had a magnet. And this magnet produced the magnetic field that we needed. However, now we have two coils. We don't have a magnet at all. But one of these coils will be used to produce a magnet and that coil is called the primary coil. This primary coil is going to produce a magnet, magnetic field that we need to produce induced current. So let us take a look at the primary coil. It has a battery which provides potential difference for current to flow. There is a switch. And when you put the switch on, the current begins now to flow through the coil. Now, as the current begins to flow through this coil, immediately a magnetic field will be produced around this coil. Let's look, have a look at the other coil. And it is called the secondary coil. Now, this secondary coil is not connected to a battery or to a cell but instead it is connected to a galvanometer. And what was the function of the galvanometer? It deflects when there is current. At the cu here right now it is at zero position because there is no current flowing through it. So the minute we switch on the current in the primary coil, now current begins to flow through this primary coil. And as current flows through this primary coil, what do you expect? You expect a magnetic field to be produced around this coil. So here's a magnetic field produced around the coil. So the secondary coil now comes in a changing magnetic field. First there was no magnetic field. Now all of a sudden there is a magnetic field 
in the region of the coil. So the secondary coil is in a region of changing magnetic field and no sooner this happens you will find that the galvanometer has deflected. Next we are going to switch off the current. The minute we switch off the current the magnetic field is going to disappear. So now the secondary coil is suddenly in zero magnetic field. So which means it will again show deflection but it will show deflection in the opposite direction. So what does the secondary coil experience? When you switch on the current there is an increase in magnetic field and when you switch off the current there is a decrease in magnetic field. So there is a changing magnetic field associated with coil 2 and hence current gets induced in this coil 2. So let's go over it again. So we have the switch. We close the switch. As soon as we close the switch, current begins to flow in this in the primary coil. And because current begins to flow in this primary coil, a magnetic field is produced in this area. So the secondary coil is now in a region of increasing magnetic field. And since there is a changing magnetic field in associated with the secondary coil, current begins to flow in this coil. In the next step now, we are going to switch off the current. Switch off the current means the magnetic field is now going to disappear. So suddenly this coil, the secondary coil is now in a zero magnetic field. We open the switch, we break the circuit, so current stops flowing in the primary coil. Primary coil, no current. No current means no magnetic field. No magnetic field which means the secondary coil is now in zero magnetic field. So again from a high magnetic field the magnetic field is now fallen to zero. So there is a changing magnetic field in the secondary coil and current begins to flow in the secondary coil. This is the figure given in a textbook so let us discuss this figure 2. So we have coil 1 which is a primary coil and it is connected to the battery and then we have a key here and here we have the secondary coil which is connected to the galvanometer. So when current is switched on in the battery in the coil 1 here we have current begins to flow and because current begins to flow a magnetic field is produced in this area and because a magnetic field is produced in this area coil 2 now comes in a region of changing magnetic field. The magnetic field is suddenly has increased in coil 2. So a current is now induced in coil 2. Current begins to flow through coil 2. Then in the next case we stop the current. When we stop the current the magnetic field also stops. Now suddenly the, uh, in coil 2, in the area around coil 2, the magnetic field has dropped. So the magnetic field has changed. So current will again be induced but in the opposite direction. But when constant current flows through the coil 1, the magnetic field around coil 1 will be constant. For like for a minute or so, if you have current continuously flowing in coil 1, so there will be a con constant magnetic field. Why constant ma magnetic field? because there is a constant current. You keep the switch on for like a couple of minutes, maybe two or three minutes and you find there will be a constant uh, current, there is a constant magnetic field. So coil 2 now is in a region of, there is a magnetic field around coil 2 but it is a constant field. And constant fields do not produce current the galvanometer will show zero deflection. The minute you switch off the current, 
here, you switch off the current, there will be no current, there will be no magnetic field, and since there is no magnetic field, the field now will suddenly drop to zero. Now there will be current here, because now coil 2 will be in a changing magnetic field, in a decreasing magnetic field. How do we induce current in a coil? There are two ways to do it. One, moving a coil in a magnetic field. So here's a magnetic field. And you have this coil. And you keep moving the coil up and down in the magnetic field. Keep the magnetic field constant and you move the coil. And this will produce current in your coil. The other option is changing the magnetic field around the coil. So, you, so here you have a coil and you change the magnetic field around the coil. You keep the coil stationary but you change the magnetic field around the coil. So as soon as you change the magnetic field around the coil, current is induced in the coil because the coil is now in a changing magnetic field. So here we have two options. We keep the magnetic field constant, we move the coil, or we keep the coil constant in one position, we change the magnetic field. However, it is convenient to move the coil in the magnetic field. To produce a magnetic field, we require magnets. And these magnets are very heavy, so they cannot be moved very easily. So here we have the North Pole and the South Pole, two magnets with the North Pole and South Pole as a magnetic field between them. And then we take a coil and we move it in the magnetic field. Because the coil is light, it's easier to move the coil in the magnetic field rather than to move the magnetic field because the magnets are very heavy. So we move the coil in the magnetic field heavy are kept stationary so the magnetic field is kept stationary and you move the coil to go over these points again so there are two options we said the first option is to keep the magnet stationary and move the coil or to move the coil and uh, to move the magnet you move the magnet while you keep the coil stationary. We usually choose this option, the first option of keeping the magnet stationary and moving the coil because magnets are very heavy. It's better to keep them stationary and to move the coils. We'll go over that, summarize the mutual induction once again. So when the switch is turned on, As soon as you find the switch turned on, current is induced, which means the galvanometer shows deflection. The minute you turn the switch off, at that moment only, turned off, right at that moment, again you find the current is induced, because now the magnetic field is decreasing, but in this case, the galvanometer shows deflection in the opposite direction. If you keep it on, keep the switch on for some time, no current is induced, because as long as a current is flowing constantly through the primary coil, the magnetic field is constant and the galvanometer shows zero deflection. So you put the switch on, you get deflection. You keep the current constant, constant current. Current is now flowing through the switch because you have turned it on, current flows. Constant current flows, deflection is zero because magnetic field is now constant. And next, you switch the current off. 
the minute you switch the current off the magnetic field is decreasing and there is a deflection in the opposite direction this point is very important when current flows continuously there is a constant magnetic field there is no deflection that is deflection only when you're switching the current on at that moment and when you're switching the current off only at that moment so it's called momentary deflection if you read the textbook they've used the word momentary deflection at that moment of switching it on or switching it off we we'll we'll now learn the fleming's right hand rule this fleming's right hand rule gives us direction of the induced current remember the direction of the current as we have seen depends on which the north pole or the south pole movement of the north pole or the south pole it is in opposite direction sometimes it's clockwise sometimes it's anti clockwise it all depends on the movement of the conductor or the magnetic field now stretch the thumb the forefinger and the middle finger of your right hand perpendicular to each other so here you can see they have stretched the thumb then you have the forefinger and the middle finger all are stretched perpendicular to each other if the forefinger indicates the direction of the magnetic field now this is my forefinger it shows the direction of the magnetic field the thumb shows the direction of the conductor the motion of the conductor then the middle finger will show the direction of the induced current this is the middle finger it will show the direction of induced current so if you have magnetic field here in this direction and the conductor is moving upwards the coil or the conductor is moving upwards you'll find the current is induced in this direction so the right hand rule it shows the direction of induced current if you remember the left hand rule it shows the force the direction of the force when a coil carrying when a current carrying coil is placed in a magnetic field 